What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to throw a Damiki rig for deep schooling bass. We crushed them today, you're not gonna wanna miss this video. There's some shad down there, about 30 foot of water, and look at those dots. Come on, I'm dropping right on. Oh, this has to be a cast, I gotta get to it. Beauty right there. Got it. There we go. Oh my gosh. I mean, that is absolutely picture perfect right there, guys. Best way to catch them right here when you figure it out. Just fishing for these fish over these bait balls, throwing the Demiki rig, and that is a good one right there. I mean, you cannot ask for anything better. Oh my gosh. It's a good one. He's peeling drag. <laughs> Oh, there we go, guys. Beautiful fish on the Demiki rig. That is awesome. It's one of my favorite ways to catch them, guys. And in this video, I'm gonna show you my full process for finding these offshore schools of shad and catching them on the Demiki rig with the live scope. I'm gonna talk through my process of finding with 2D sonar, how to trick them into biting, and all the different steps you need. And you're going to learn a deadly technique today. So stay tuned. It's gonna be a lot of good info. Okay guys, today we're on a power plant lake. It's early January, but water temperatures are in the 60s, and this lake has giant gizzard shad in it, eight to 13 inch gizzards. And whenever you can find gizzard shad on this lake, you're going to find big bass. The problem with fishing in January on this lake is that the gizzards can be as shallow as two foot of water or as deep as 40 feet. And I don't know exactly where they're going to be. So I have to start out by graphing with my down imaging, side imaging, and 2D sonar to find these gizzards, whether they're gonna be out here suspended in the open, suspended around standing timber, up against the bank, not really sure, but that's what we're gonna do first off here is find those gizzards. I'll show you what they look like on the 2D sonar and on down imaging and how to differentiate them from different types of forage and shad as well. So I'm just gonna graph around here and I'll let you know when I find something. Uh oh guys, there's something pretty interesting right there. That is a school of big bass setting up in about 15 feet of water, just randomly cruising out here. I have not found any gizzard shad around this area, but that is something that is very intriguing. You can tell they're bass because of the way they're grouped up. I'm gonna drop a little pin right here and just mark them as fish. And that way I can spin back around if I see gizzard shad in the general area. Because we're in January, these fish are probably still in their winter mode or pre-spawn mode, even though our temperatures are 60 here on this power plant lake. And if there are gizzard shad just kind of suspended out here randomly, those big bass will find them eventually. I'm not gonna try to fish for those bass though that are suspended out here because they're not gonna be very easy to catch unless they're actively feeding up on the shad. So finding the shad is priority number one, but now that I've seen those bass out there, I think there's a pretty good chance I'll find some shad and they actually may have just found some on the side imaging. On the side imaging here, we can see two different schools of shad if I make this full screen. We have a school of shad here on the left of the screen and the right. So on the left side here, I'm gonna mark this as bait fish. And then we also have, we're gonna hit save. And then we have this one over here, hit save and we have two schools of gizzard shad out here that we just found. Oh man, that is what we're looking for right there, guys. There's some shad down there in about 30 foot of water and look at those dots. Those are three good fish. You can see them even on the side imaging over here. And the thing about these dots that tell me that they're big ones is that you can see that they're popping up on my 2D sonar and on my down imaging. That is a great sign. The way I have my graph set up is that if I'm seeing a lot of small fish on my 2D sonar, they're not gonna show up even if I'm seeing them on my down imaging. It's just the way I have my settings. You can actually buy my sonar settings guides on fishmoment.com if you want to get my exact settings for this HDS Live unit or any unit that I run. And basically, that is ideal right there. I need to sit down, make a couple casts on that school of fish. It was right over top of those bait balls and those look like three to four pound bass at a minimum. There's some more right there. Oh my gosh, look at how big those fish are. They are big arches on the 2D sonar. They're stacked up big dots on that uh, down imaging view. 
and I just kind of am regraphing this just to kind of give you guys a better view. And then there are some more fish. Actually, this is kind of interesting. You can see there's some smaller fish down there. And this actually may be a shad. If I switch over to my split view and show you these right here, I'm gonna kind of move over. The fish that are on the far, far left side of the screen here, these are bass. And you can see those arches there, the way I have my unit set up, you can see that those arches are pretty big. But you can also see a couple of dots over here that are on the down imaging that are barely showing up. And they don't show up at all on the 2D sonar. That's the, because I set my settings in a way that I basically filter out all of the small fish on 2D sonar and only show the bigger fish on down imaging. Again, it's all my sonar settings got to have on fishmoment.com. And that actual dot there that is right here just above that school of shad may actually be a gizzard shad itself. These gizzard shad, again, are 10 to 12 inches long. Those are some big arches, so we're definitely around some big bass. And that school of shad, if you look at it, is actually not that uniform. You can see individual dots and spaces in that group of shad. And when you see that, that means that you're dealing with bigger bait fish. And that isolated little dot off to the side lets me know that these are most likely big gizzard shad. And you can see again here, just as I let go of this view, big fish suspended up in that 10 foot range above these shad and then there's shad down the bottom that are spread apart to an extent and aren't just like a cloud they're actually have some texture to them so this is a school of gizzard shad and there's some big bass in this area let's stop talking and let's get to fishing okay guys so we just found this school of shad that's down here and the way you can tell they're gizzards is just by how big of a return some of those shad make and whenever you get bigger returns from those shad almost to the point where when you kind of scope around them they look like crappie or something like that that's when you know you're dealing with bigger gizzards because it's just a big bait fish and what i'm trying to do is find some bass that are actively feeding in and around those shad on the live scope right now you can see the shad but you don't see any bass necessarily crashing through them they're just kind of balls of shad just sitting there so what i'm going to do is actually wait as if i was fishing for schooling fish till i see some bass and there i actually see one about 60 feet out a big one right on the bottom just underneath those shad schools and that is exactly what i'm looking for that one I mean, that is a freaking toad right there i'm gonna to try to pitch a little demiki rig out to him see if i can hit the cast right because that is a big one right there little trick here guys it's pretty sunny outside so i can't really see the screen all that well especially when you have this dark color palette on so i'm actually going to go into menu and i'm going to go to my favorite settings which i call bait balls and this is a blue color palette that pops a lot better in these sunny conditions and when i'm chasing schools of bait fish and just fish out in the open this color palette works super well it's not the best when you're fishing around trees and cover and stuff like that so i don't go to it that often but when i am just out here looking for isolated bass and stuff like what i see right there on the screen this is a great color palette just because i can see it so much clearer in these sunny conditions and you can watch my bait now it's falling right down to two fish uh oh this could be game time right there eat a fish yep he's on it eat it got him there we go I mean, that blue color palette was sweet on that. Dropped that Demiki rig right on his head and he ate it. That was awesome, guys. And that is a big one right there. That is what I am talking about. <laughs> Demiki rigging in the winter time. Whew, that's right, right there, guys, what we're talking about. It's a 3 8 ounce ball head Demiki rig. The Mega Bass 4 inch has dong. This is a sneaky little bait, guys, that it's hard to find. I'll link them in the description. You have to get them off of uh, Japanese uh, retailers that have uh, warehouses in America. So I'll put that in the description. But that is a beautiful little bait, uh, or little bass right there. My goodness, look at that thing. It is nice and clean and fat, and it absolutely got all over that bait when I dropped it down on him. Beautiful fish right there. Let's get him back down in the lake. That little Demiki rig, guys, is awesome. And the reason I'm going with a 3 8 ounce ball head is I want that bait to get down really fast to those fish. It is going crazy right now on the graph. It took me a while to kind of get into them, guys, because honestly, there's so much open space for them to get in. I probably spent a solid 
25 or 30 minutes going in a circle out here with my live scope after identifying those shad in the first place. Normally what I do guys is I don't mess around too much with the 2D sonar after I find the shad in the first place. You need to find the shad first. I'm about to catch one right here again, eat a fish. You gotta find the shad first. Then you can kind of just live scope around until you find them like this, just absolutely loaded up. And here's the advantage of that 3 8 ounce head I'm using. You can see that bait gets down to those fish super fast. And when they're aggressive and they want it, they will just chomp that thing. They don't care that it's heavy and that it's falling past their face. And sometimes it even helps that it's heavy. So don't be afraid to go that heavier head. You don't want to miss those fish when they're going to town. I need to spin the boat around though, because I'm kind of getting away from them a little bit, swimming away from me. Oh, there they are right in front of me. Do you see them just push all those shad straight to the bottom? That was so sick watching them do that. That was so cool. I mean, they're just, they squashed them down to the bottom. Hopefully I catch one of these fish. I mean, they just pushed them straight down there and now they're swimming up a little bit. That was insane. That's what you're looking for, guys. That's the moment. If you can get that moment, Right, and you can see they're chasing some shad up to the surface. I mean, they are just going crazy down in front of me and the sides and just gotta get my bait down there when they're doing it. Can't believe I missed that opportunity. You kinda gotta take your chances and there's straight ahead too. When you can, but if you miss the cast, it is kind of annoying and kind of sad. So you have to be pretty accurate with your live scope to do this too, where you know where your bait is in relation to the trolling motor and everything. Cause I missed that cast by about 10 feet short and I didn't get bit. So you gotta really be accurate and just a lot of times just practice with that live scope. But you'll see him just kind of go crazy. Like in that last clip, that was super cool. Golly, that is some shad right there, guys. If I've ever seen some, look at that screen. These are all bait fish. You would think that's the bottom of the lake or something, but that's just all shad. That's crazy. I'm waiting to see some bass around them. There they are, right in the middle of them. See, there's a hole in the middle of those shad there. It was there for a second. There it is. You can see those red dots in that hole in the shad. It kind of closes up and ebbs and flows, so you kind of have to... Oh, golly, one just hit it. Eat it, fish. Come on. He's right on it. Eat it. Eat it. Come on. But that's what I'm talking about. When they blow a hole in the shad, you can see that there's those brighter red dots. It's kind of almost harder to see the bass right now because there's those big gizzard shads. So the big gizzard shad make it sometimes hard to even tell where the bass are. But if you can look for that hole in there that I showed earlier, and I'll put another image of it on the screen, I kind of missed the opportunity there. There was a big hole in it, and then those bass were right in the center of that, and there were those brighter red dots with this color palette. There they are right there. They're herding them right on top. Come on, I'm dropping right on them. Oh, this has to be the cast. I gotta get bit on this, come on. Got him. I mean, that was absolutely perfect. They were right on top of those shad, about to make a hole, I actually kind of anticipated them. And that is a, another just nice big fish right here, guys. I mean, there's nothing to complain about right there. Beauty right there, solid three and a half pounder, just spotless. It's been out here swimming in this clear open water and these fish are just the best. Look how they eat that thing every time, just top of the mouth, choking it. What a beautiful fish right there, guys. The Miki rig is on fire. I don't even really have much more to share on this. I've caught a bunch of fish already. We've only been fishing for about an hour. So I'm actually going to stop fishing and sit down and explain the exact setup I'm using, my gear, the baits, everything like that. So you guys know exactly what to throw to put these fish in the boat. Let's get this guy back down there. 
Man, guys, that was a ton of fun catching them on the Demiki rig out there deep. It only took me about 30 minutes to find those fish. We're not in a massive lake. And once I found them, it took a little while to figure out how to get them to bite and how they needed to position around those schools of shad. But once I got the right bait and got the right timing, we put them in the boat all in about an hour and a half. So really good day of fishing. The bait I was throwing again is the Mega Bass four inch has dong. You probably haven't seen this bait before because they're very hard to find. And the reason I go with this specific bait is because one, I think that the fish are just not seeing it if other guys are throwing fluke style baits. But also, as you can see, just as I'm holding it in my hand, the tail bounces around like crazy. One thing about fishing a Demiki rig is that you don't really need to impart that much action yourself. And by having a bait that has a very lively tail like that, I basically can just hold it in front of those fish and just the natural shaking of the water and my hand holding the rod will cause that tail to go crazy and it just looks super lifelike and it catches a ton of fish for me. It also pairs up super well on this 3 8 ounce ball head that I'm throwing. As you can see that 3 8 ounce ball head is pretty beefy but you also have a nice collar on that hasdong that matches up with that bigger head giving it a more streamlined sneak pro uh, sleek profile. And the jig head I'm throwing is the 4x4 tackle ball head. It is a 3 8 ounce ball head with a little screw lock. I love that screw lock because it holds that bait on there super well. I have actually been throwing this actual Demiki rig for two trips now and have caught 10 or 12 bass and have not gone through a single one of these hasdongs just because that screw lock keeps it in place so well. This is really important when you're catching those schooling fish because you want to be able to get back in there as fast as possible. You don't want to waste time re-rigging a new bait. So using that screw lock is going to ensure that that bait just stays on there tight and the only reason you're gonna have to change it is if it gets completely torn up like this one is here I might change it out for my next trip. When I'm throwing this bait I like to throw it on a Denali Covert Light 7 foot 2 medium heavy power spinning rod. The medium heavy power rod is pretty important as, long, as well as the longer rod because one I'm fishing very deep so you want a long rod for leverage. You also want a medium heavy power rod to cast that 3 8 ounce ball head. If you go with a lighter rod than that, like a medium, you're not going to be able to cast this bait as effectively and it's just going to feel overwhelming on such a light rod. I'm pairing that with a Abu Garcia Max Pro spinning reel I got at Walmart uh, and I'm putting some uh, 10 pound Sunline braided line for my main line and I'm putting a 30 foot liter of uh, eight pound Sunline FC Snapper liter fluorocarbon. You don't necessarily need super light line guys when you're fishing this bait, but you do want to have lighter line because you want that bait to fall fast. You don't want that line to catch in the water too much, but because we're fishing in open water and things like that, it doesn't matter if you throw eight pound test, even six pound test. I just go to eight because it's um, just a, a good happy median and it allows that bait to fall very naturally. And that's really my whole setup guys from today. Hopefully you enjoyed watching me catch some fish on the live scope and crushing them out here deep. Definitely try it on your home lakes if you have schools of shad out in the middle right now because it can be a deadly way to put fish in the boat. Thanks for checking out this video. We'll see you all in the next one.